This is the next video in the chapter on atoms, molecules, and ions. Here we're going to talk about isotopes, the different versions of atoms of a particular element. So you may recognize this slightly blobby looking box as the periodic table. And in the last video, we talked all about chemical symbols, and this is probably where you've seen those chemical symbols before. So we talked about carbon. You can see carbon's chemical symbol C is located in the periodic table, but there's some other numbers here. We zoom in. There's some other numbers here that aren't the same as the numbers that we were using before. So let's go back to our wimpy drawing of a periodic table. So if we look for the carbon in the periodic table, it's right about here. Let's blow that up. There's the box. Okay, so we recognize the C as the chemical symbol that we talked about in the last video. And we know that the number of protons that carbon has is six and that's sometimes listed somewhere in the box in this periodic table that was at the top corner. So the number of protons is the atomic number. And we know the other important number is the mass number. So we're looking for the mass number. We can see the name of the element was written here. Helpful, spelling can be hard. And my box is too small now, so I'm gonna make the box a little bigger. There was one more number in there, and that number was 12.011. And we said that carbon's mass number was 12, so maybe this is the mass number. Right? Maybe? Why is it 12.011, though, and not just 12? Why doesn't it look the same as the mass number that we had before? So the answer is that this is not exactly the mass number. This is something different called the atomic mass, which is close to the mass number, but not exactly the same. So the question everyone wants to know, why are these not the same thing? And the answer is because of isotopes. So let's dive into what an isotope is, and then we'll come back to this weird atomic mass that's in the periodic table. So isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element. Meaning they have the same number of protons. But they have different numbers of neutrons. And if their neutrons are different, then their mass numbers are different, which is the sum of the protons and neutrons. Remember, this was part of our history of the atom when they discovered that atoms with different masses still had the same chemical properties. They determined there must be something else in the nucleus, giving that its extra weight. So let's keep going with carbon because we're kind of on a roll with carbon here. So the most common isotope of carbon is carbon-12, the one we've been talking about. And that carbon has six protons because every carbon has six protons. And it has six neutrons because six plus six equals a mass number of 12. And then we can also write down here the percent abundance. Because carbon is found all over the earth and the entire universe. And out of all of the carbon atoms in the universe, 98.89% of them are this particular kind of carbon atom, a carbon 12. So let's make a table and let's talk about the other kinds of isotopes. So this is gonna be our isotope, number of protons, number of neutrons, and this is the percent abundance. Okay, so one of these types is carbon-12. The second most common isotope of carbon is carbon-13. 
And that, by the way, that's how you, you say this out loud. You say the name of the element, and then you say the mass number, so carbon 13. So all carbons have six protons. This particular carbon, the mass number is one unit larger. So if we take mass number and minus number of protons, that's going to give us seven neutrons. And the abundance, which is not something you can calculate, by the way, that's something that's experimentally determined, 1.11% of all the carbon atoms in the universe are carbon-13. So those are essentially the only kinds of carbons that are found naturally. There are other isotopes of carbon. One other isotope of carbon that we sometimes generate in the laboratory is called carbon-14, which has six protons, eight neutrons, but it doesn't exist in very high numbers naturally. So we'll just say it's trace amounts, which is code for basically zero. And so let's revisit our initial question here. So why is this number in the box on the periodic table for carbon different than the mass number? And the reason is that rather than just using 12, which is the mass of the most commonly occurring carbon, this number, the atomic mass, is a weighted average of all the different types of naturally occurring carbon. So it's sort of a representation of all of them. So that atomic mass for one element, or if it's for a compound with multiple elements in it, the molecular mass, that is a weighted average of the mass of all isotopes. And we can calculate the weighted average as long as we have the percent abundances in the same way that you can calculate your grade in the course if you know the weight of each of the different parts and the score that you had on each of them. The atomic mass is calculated by taking the sum. So this is a capital sigma. This means we're gonna take the sum of several identical looking terms. Each of those terms is going to be an isotope mass, which is the mass number, times the fractional abundance. which is just the decimal version of this percentage. And so the sigma means that we take the isotope times the fractional abundance for each of the different isotopes that exist naturally for that element, and we add them all together, and that gives us our weighted average. There we are. Okay, so let's try doing an example. Here I've given the uh, the mass numbers for carbon 12, 13, and 14 to a few more significant figures to six significant figures here so we can get a really precise answer. And why don't you test out your math skills, see if you can calculate an atomic mass for carbon using this information that matches the number listed in the periodic table. I'll pause here if you want to calculate that yourself. And now I will calculate it. So for carbon, the atomic mass is going to be a series of terms like this, one for each of the isotopes. So the isotope mass for carbon-12 is 12.0000 atomic mass units times its fractional abundance. So the percentage as a fraction between zero and one, 0 0.9889, and that's one term. And then we're gonna do one term for each isotope. So for carbon-13, the very precise mass number is 13.0034 atomic mass units times its fractional abundance, which is 0 0.0111. And then if we wanna throw in the last one, it would be 14.0032 times its fractional abundance, which is zero. So I guess we can include that for the sake of completeness. So anything that can't have its abundance measured isn't included in the weighted mass. All right, so we add these numbers together. 
And with our handy dandy calculator, you should arrive at 12.011 atomic mass units, which is the same as the number in the periodic table. So now we know where that number came from. But here's a common misconception that students often think. 12.011 is not the mass of a single carbon atom. You will never find any carbon atom anywhere in the universe with 12.011 atomic mass units as its mass. So no carbon atoms actually have this mass. Remember, we know the mass of all the possible options, right? The mass of a carbon atom can be 12.0000, or it could be 13.0034, or it could be 14.0032. But in no universe could the carbon ever be 12.011. That number is just an average. So you may be saying to yourself, why the heck did we even find this? Why would we include this number in the table if this isn't even the mass of a real carbon? And the answer is it's representative of all of the carbons that exist. And it gives us information to help us guess which of these carbons is the most abundant. So we may not know the percent abundances, but we can guess that most atoms of that element will have a mass number that's close to that average. Because that's how a weighted average works. The number that contributes the most to the weighted average looks the most similar to the final answer. So because carbon 12 represented 99% of all the carbons, the atomic mass of 12.01 looked pretty similar to the mass number of 12. So if we didn't know this last column, if we didn't know the percent abundances, we could still guess based on the carbon's mass of 12.011, we could guess that most of the carbon in the known universe is carbon 12, specifically 98.89%. So this is something you should be able to do with this mass number. Not only can you use the atomic mass to do calculations, which we'll do in a few videos, but you can also use it as information. You can look at this number and you can make an educated guess as to which isotope of that particular element exists most commonly in the known universe. So in the next video, we will talk about chemical formulas, which contain multiple chemical symbols.